Mike Moore Media, the first place to hear Rockingham County news and information. On the line is Dr. Mark Kinlaw, president of Rockingham Community College. Hey, Mark, how you doing? I'm doing fine, Mike. Hope you are. I'm doing fine, too. Well, it's the first day of fall, always a, a nice time of the year on campus at RCC, isn't it? It is. Well, we're, uh, we're still in challenging times. How's the fall semester going? Mike, it's, it's going pretty well. Uh, it has certainly been a challenging time for, well, really worldwide, but uh, yeah. those, those of us in, in education, it's, it's certainly been a, a, a big challenge uh, since mid-March, but I think we're in a better place than certainly we were at the end of the spring. Uh, but things are off to a good start. Uh, we're doing about 68% of our instruction uh, in a virtual format or online. Um, and then we're doing a 32% uh, face-to-face because there are a lot of those uh, types of courses that we can't teach online, such as welding and machining and uh, the health sciences and basic law enforcement training. Those types of, pro- of courses and programs are still offered face-to-face. And so, uh, but we're, things are going pretty smoothly. Um, so we're, we're pleased uh, that, we're, that the semester is off and running, and uh, I think things have settled down pretty nicely. Well, that sounds good. Um, across the state, you mentioned 68% uh, virtual and 32% face-to-face. I know every community college is different, but how does that compare around the state? I think that's going to be very typical of, uh, for uh, – all of us really, uh, we have taken, especially our college transferable uh, programs, uh, you know, history, psychology, sociology, those types of courses uh, are certainly uh, not as hard to put online uh, as some of the uh, career and technical fields are. So most community colleges are doing what we're doing. Uh, it's very typical. And so that's what you're going to find across our system. Um, and you know, the thing about it is we've, uh, we have certainly um, improved instruction uh, over the last uh, three to five years, I'd say. But this, w- with COVID-19, we've been pushed to, uh, to really move the needle a little faster in that regard. So we, we have made a lot of strides in the quality of, of online instruction. We do some of it synchronous, which means that um, if you're online taking the course, you are required to log in at a certain time with that whole class. And so that's a way to get students more engaged so they're not just completely independent out there. Um, and so we, we bring them into a, what we call virtual or, or in, in synchronous type of learning where everybody in the class dials in at the same time uh, for class. So we're doing, we're doing some of that, too, to get students engaged. We don't, we don't want them to totally be disconnected with us. Yeah, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's great to have that structure in place. We've talked about this before. What safety measures did you uh, put in place to deal with COVID-19? Has, has that changed some since we last talked a couple months ago? It, it has not changed. We have uh, certainly put a lot of, back in mid-March, we started putting a lot of cleaning protocol in place. And so uh, we, have, we have maintained uh, that, that protocol uh, ever since mid-March, and so I think that's going well. Um, we have um, certainly uh, purchased protective shields uh, where we where we needed them, especially in areas of high traffic, like in uh, our business office area, uh, places like that, where you need to have that shield. You know, you see those out in your grocery stores and other places, but those have been very difficult to get uh, because everybody in the country is trying to get them. So. Mm-hmm. We have certainly purchased as many of those as we can. We have a lot of um, sanitizing supplies uh, stationed throughout the campus. Um, and, you know, we've done all that we possibly can to make sure that we're cleaning behind uh, students in between classes uh, and, and those types of things. And so we designate certain seats that students can sit in, those that they can't, so that we limit the number of seats that we have to clean. So it has been a challenge in that regard. We're requiring masks on campus unless you're outside where you can socially distance from others. And that's, that is going well. Our students have been very cooperative. And so all of those things are still in place. And really, Mike, I don't see that changing for a while until, the, until this pandemic is behind us. And the thing about it is I think the sanitation 
supplies and equipment that we have purchased are going to be applicable even during flu season, even once the pandemic's over. So I think we've learned some things from all of this. But uh, we, we've put all those things in place just like everybody else has and trying to follow them as close as we can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You talk about learning things. Uh, people are, are really thinking outside of the box in a lot of ways, aren't they? They are. Uh, no question about it. We're having to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we've uh, we've heard a lot about the CARES funds and all of the, the county and the municipalities uh, here in Rockingham County all getting some of that uh, money. What types of federal COVID-19 relief funds have you received at RCC? Well, we've gotten almost a million dollars uh, from what from what's called the CARES Act, and uh, half of the we got right at nine hundred and eighty thousand dollars, and half of it had to be spent. At least half of it had to be on direct student assistance, and so we had to develop a formula as to how to award those funds. And there were certain restrictions with those funds in terms of what students were eligible. So we have been a we have awarded uh, well over three hundred and fifty thousand dollars to eligible students. And certainly we think by December we will, uh, start, we, we will expend the student piece of that. We wanted to get the money in the students' hands as, as quickly as possible uh, for those that were affected by, or I mean, everybody's been affected by COVID-19, but it was, it was students that were eligible. And so we have, we have just about expended those uh, funds. The other half could be spent uh, on, on things that uh, by the college, where we had a disruption of services due to COVID. So in other words, we could, we could um, when we converted a lot of our staff to teleworking, uh, the computers that we had to buy for them to take home, we could use funds to, to purchase those. Um, that's just an example of how, of, of how you could spend some of the funds. We could spend it on all the sanitizing equipment and supplies that we've had to purchase. So some of the, any way that we've had to purchase computers for online instruction because of COVID, then we could spend the funds for that. So we are, um, we are spending those funds, and we have a year to spend uh, uh, those funds. So we've gotten until March to spend the, the $980,000, and we will certainly have no problem doing that. Um, so that, that's been the primary uh, uh, source of funds that we've received. Uh, but we've also gotten some money uh, through the North Carolina Community College system because the state of North Carolina was, was provided with stimulus money, and the General Assembly has allotted money uh, to the uh, community college system to be used. And so we got our enrollment growth money this year uh, through the uh, coronavirus relief funds as opposed to getting it through our regular state formula budget. So uh, that was $41.5 million to the entire system. We got 555000 of that, and we have until December the 30th to spend it. And so we will spend that on, on faculty, um, new faculty um, for programs. We can spend it on equipment, uh, those types of things. So we'll, that's how we got our enrollment growth money this year. Normally we get that from the General Assembly through our regular state budget. And then the governor has given us, this is a really good one, the governor has given us $15 million um, as a community college system uh, to support scholarships and financial aid for programs not normally eligible for regular financial aid. Uh, so this, these would be programs in continuing education like uh, phlebotomy. It could be uh, a certified nurse assistant. It could be welding. Those programs that we like to run in, uh, in what we call continuing education usually does not qualify for financial aid, but the governor has given us about $15 million for, the, for our college. It's $107,000 in, in scholarships to students in those programs because what we anticipate happening is as people come off unemployment, then they're going to be looking to get in the workforce quickly, and so this is a way to – um, to have them enroll in these types of programs that are more short-term in nature, and then there's some financial assistance for them. So you know, we've gotten some real support uh, that's, that's very beneficial, and it's going to really help our students. You really have. When you, when you go over those numbers, it would have been uh, impossible almost to make it without these funds, wouldn't it? Oh, they, uh, oh without question. Uh, we would have been devastated without it. And so um, the enrollment growth funds are a real um, a, a big issue for all the community colleges. And the, the problem with the, with the way we were funded this year is they're non-recurring, which simply means 
We get it this year, but we're not guaranteed next year. Normally, we get enrollment growth funds as recurring, so they, they, we get it each year. And so we're going to have to really uh, pitch to the General Assembly that we need our enrollment growth funds as we go into the biennium budget process, which starts in January with when they come back to, uh, for, for their session. Uh, but I think we'll be able to get that uh, uh, from them. But there's so many unknowns with the budget. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, unknowns uh, every day, it seems like, in, in the world we're in the, today, that's for sure. Absolutely. Uh, you, you mentioned a, a, a key word right as we started this conversation, Mark, machining. And uh, we did a program with uh, Jeff Garska last week with the city of Reedsville. Uh, and the machining program that's just launched at Reedsville High School. Tell us about that. That's exciting. This is very exciting. This is a partnership with the city of Reedsville um, and uh, the Rockingham County Schools, Golden Leaf Foundation, and our college. And so the, we have established a manual machining program on Reedsville High School's campus. And so it is our program, the college's program, and the students will, um, they're high school students taking the program while they're still in high school, of course, and they earn a manual machining certificate while they're in high school. And so uh, Golden Leaf Foundation provided us $200,000 to help purchase the equipment that we have uh, put in the lab there. We've got a very, very nice lab on their campus. The, uh, the, the county school system uh, renovated the uh, space for the lab, and then, we, of course, the, the grant uh, paid for the equipment. We have hired an instructor, uh, Portia Russell is her name. Real excited to have her on board, and she will be teaching uh, the program out at Reedsville High School. So a student can finish that program while in high school and then take those credits and apply them to the computer integrated machining program here at our college, and they can come and complete that and, and, and finish their associate degree or if they elect to, they can go straight to work. So this is the type of thing that we're trying to do across, uh, across the county. But this is a good example of how uh, city government and, and uh, the college and you know, a, a school system can all work together with a funding mechanism like Golden Leaf to make these kind of things happen for students. So we're, re- we're really excited about it. It's, it's pretty neat. Yeah, it really is. That's a, that's a great partnership. That's a, that's a win-win-win, it sounds like, all the way around. It is. Yeah, you, you mentioned a little bit about uh, looking at the budget, the, the college budget uh, for the community college system, uh, and you mentioned a few things a moment ago, but what are some other priorities, some things that uh, you'll be taking a look at in that new budget year? Well, we had, we had uh, our, our President's Association had worked very hard with the, uh, the trustees across our system and with our state board to develop a three-year strategic plan. And this is, of course, prior to uh, COVID-19 uh, disrupting a lot of things. And we had adopted a three-year strategic plan that we felt really good about that focused on enrollment growth money, faculty and staff salaries, uh, and an investment in, in uh, information technology. And uh, we were real excited about what we thought would be a good uh, um, approach. And the General Assembly, um, uh, certainly were, they were on board with us. And so with COVID, a lot of that's been disrupted. And so now we're having to rethink. And, we, and we've got to be realistic about it, Mike, because we know that the state uh, budget picture right now is uncertain. Uh, they do not; they have not even uh, developed a state revenue forecast as of yet. We think that's going to happen sometime later this month, maybe early October. Um, we just don't have. There's just so many unknowns about um, how the money from the federal government can be used uh, because we don't know that it can be used to plug. Uh, funding gaps right now in our in our state to balance our budget and so there's just a lot of unknowns so as a president association in fact we just met this past wednesday to talk about what our priorities will be we will focus very strongly on enrollment growth money because that will help keep our budget stable and that's what we're going to try to argue is that we need to be uh, they need to keep our budgets so much of our budgets based on enrollment well, everybody's enrollment is down because of COVID-19, and we don't want to be severely impacted uh, from funding mechanism when we're going to be looked to to help the, the state come uh, recover economically. 
so uh, we'll, we'll focus hard on enrollment growth money, and um, we at some point will will 